What do you think you're doing here? Just a few more weeks until Hogwarts Legacy comes out. Seems a lot of people are excited about this game. It's the most waitlisted game on Steam and on Epic Games. And everything about the game is looking pretty good. Especially the graphics. Everyone has been praising the graphics. But I do want to point out a few things that I've seen from the first and second showcase that are kind of concerning. And the first thing I want to talk about is the game flow or the different quests in the game. You know, based on what they said in the first showcase, it kind of sounds like this game is going to be very story driven and very linear. Like, yeah, it's in an open world, but it's going to be driven by, by the main story. And I kind of don't like that. It kind of kills the game for me. The game that didn't do that was Skyrim. If you remember in Skyrim, you do the first mission that acts like a tutorial. And once you're done with that mission, you can go ahead and do anything you want. You can do any side quest you want. You can skip the whole main story altogether. You know, they give you the options to do whatever you want. And then there's other games like Cyberpunk, where it's also open world, but the game is kind of story driven, right? You can't progress in the game until you progress the main story. You can do a bunch of side quests and find collectibles, but you'll get to a point where you can't continue. You can't do any more until you play the main story or until you progress the main story and i think it's going to be like that with this game but the question or the thing that's concerning is how much is the main story going to be in the whole game is it going to be like really strict or is it going to be a little more open like cyberpunk where there's lots of things to do even if you don't continue the main story for a while i guess it's one of those things we have to wait until the game comes out just the way they phrased it sounds like this is going to be a very story driven game and it might be their budget. Based on the things they said, it, it doesn't sound like this game had a big budget. They did say that they had to kind of think about what mechanics and what game features they wanted in the game. So they probably had to cut corners in a lot of places and really restrict the content of the game. I think the game is going to have a lot of content, but it's probably going to have a lot of similar quests. Like a lot of go and fetch quests. That, that's usually what happens with, with big games like this to have a low budget. Right, and there's a there's a couple of signs that they had a low budget. I mean, if you look at the quest givers, for example, they, they just stand there. They're just standing there doing nothing, waiting for you to talk to them. And I really hate that because it really kills the immersion of the game. Mentioning Skyrim again, in Skyrim, the quest givers, they act like any other NPC. They have their own schedules, their own routine. They have jobs. They can interact with different things. They're moving around. They're usually in the same area, but they're moving around, interacting with different things. Here, they're kind of just standing around waiting for you to talk to them and that really kills the immersion and it sounds like that's what the developers were trying to do with this game is really immerse you in the harry potter world they didn't have a big budget maybe not a big triple a budget but they probably had a decent budget I and mean, speaking of characters the voice acting is not very good like i know we're all amazed with the graphics and with with the castle and all the things that are going on but the voice acting is not very good some is better than others I think the professors have really good acting, same with the main character. Some of the NPCs, they have like, kind of like soulless acting. It sounds very generic. There's like no emotion. They say they lines in a very generic way. I feel like that's an area that could improve. And hopefully, that's just a few NPCs like we saw in the showcase. Hopefully it's not every single NPC that has bad acting. I also noticed, with one of the first NPCs we talked to in the game, the sound quality sounds a little bit off. I'm not sure what it is, but it sounds off. It doesn't sound very like high definition. Now it could be the stream because maybe they're streaming in a lower quality than what the game's running at. And also we got to remember that this is a work in progress, right? It says at the bottom it's a work in progress. So we don't know what build this is. Maybe this is the latest build or maybe this is a really old build. We don't know. They, they never said that, right? This could be like a beta or an alpha. We don't know. Maybe that's something they already improved on. Just the audio quality overall. Now the other thing about the acting is the voices don't really match the models. I've seen a few reactions on Twitter. And yeah, the voices don't really match the model, the character models. Right? The models don't, don't have a voice that you would expect. And, and they sound a little too old as well. Some of the voices need to be a little bit younger. Especially for the first year girl you, that you talked to that they showed in the showcase. I feel like her voice sounds a little bit older than she is. And once again, I think this has to do with the budget. I think what they did is they reused the assets from the NPCs and they created the quest givers. And then they hired a bunch of actors and they did a bunch of acting for, for different characters. 
and that was it. That's probably the easiest and cheapest way of doing it. A better way of doing it is to make the character model, you know, kind of resemble the, the actor. A lot of games do that, where the NPC looks kind of close to the, to the actual actor in real life. But if you don't have a big budget, you're just gonna have an actor do voices for multiple characters, and those characters are gonna be generated just like the NPCs. And I hope this is just like a few NPCs that have problems like this. I really hope that the whole game doesn't feel like this. It would really kill all of the conversations in the game. The more I look at this game, this game feels more like an action adventure game rather than a RPG. They're calling it an RPG, but it feels more like an action adventure game. You know, kind of like Ghost of Tsushima, where it's mostly an action adventure game, but it does have RPG elements like different play styles, different perks. In this game, they didn't really talk about that, but it's probably gonna be like that, where it's mostly an action adventure game with some RPG elements. I really hope this game does well. This game is looking great. It looks like there's a lot of content. Graphics are amazing. Hogwarts itself has like its own personality that you wanna learn more about and you wanna explore. I think this game makes you want to explore it. It doesn't force you to explore it, it makes you want to. So I can't wait to explore Hogwarts myself. I'm really hoping it's good. But there's a few other problems I saw with this game. In, in the first showcase, I saw a lot of frame drops. There was a, a lot of sections where, where the game kind of stuttered. But maybe it was the stream stuttering and not the actual game. And this is an earlier build, so we don't know if that's been fixed or not. Hopefully, this game doesn't have any frame issues when it releases. That seems to be a very common problem nowadays. Where there's a lot of frame drops and a lot of frame rate issues, especially on PC. There's also a few glitches. I saw this glitch right here where there's an NPC sitting down, but before you actually see the NPC, he kind of glitches out in the background. Hopefully that doesn't happen a lot in the game, but it's something that's been kind of common nowadays with new games. They have a lot of graphical glitches, they have frame drops, and we're kind of seeing that in these showcases. Hopefully this is like a really early build and they already fixed it by now. Maybe that's why they delayed the game, who knows. But overall, the game is looking pretty good. Yeah, there's a few things that I'm concerned about, but I think overall, most people are going to enjoy the game. I think the problem here is that I'm comparing it too much to an RPG. An RPG like Skyrim, where you can have different builds, different perks and all of that. Different weapon builds. I don't think this game is going to have that. Or it's not going to be as deep as a game like Skyrim. But it's going to feel more like an action adventure game, like Ghost of Tsushima. Where it's pretty much, it's an open world, story driven with a few RPG elements here and there. Another thing I want to talk about is the character creation. A lot of people are overhyping this, saying that it's really good, it's the best they've seen, it's very in-depth, and I just don't see that. I saw the character creation in the showcase and I just don't see that. It seems decent. Like, there's a decent amount of options and presets, but like, that's it. There's no sculpting, there's no, like, 100% customization by the player. You have to choose from, from the presets. And like I said, it has a decent amount. It doesn't have a lot. I've seen games with a lot more presets and I've seen games with less presets. So I think it has a good number, pretty decent. But I think the character creation is being overhyped. It's not very deep. I didn't even see an option to change the shape of your body. You can pretty much only change your face and your hair and your hair color and your skin color. And then you can add a little touches like different eyebrows, makeup and stuff like that. So that's not very many options. It's not a very deep character creation. I don't know why everyone's saying it is. It's not. It's decent. I mean, you only have three pairs of glasses to choose from from the, from the beginning. They did say there's more throughout the game. The thing with that is how much more? Are you going to have a lot of customization items or just a few? Sounds like most of the stores are in Hogsmeade. So I'm thinking there's only going to be one like shopping center. And I think that will make the game feel small because you're basically going to have Hogwarts, Hogsmeade, uh, the forest and then everything else in between you know basically the trails and the outdoors to get from place to place which is not very big but hopefully i'm wrong and there's actually a lot of things to do a lot of dungeons uh they, that's something they've mentioned or already that there are dungeons in the game hopefully there's a lot of them hopefully they're unique hopefully there's a lot of side quests but the way the way they phrased buying different cosmetic items and accessories sounds like you can only get them from one one place same with, same with the brooms Sounds like there's not a lot of cosmetic items for the broom. It sounds like they only have different options for the color, not for the actual like model of the broom. It also sounds like it's going to be tied to a quest, the whole mechanic of upgrading your broom. So that, so that makes me believe that the only thing you'll be able to change on your broom is the color. 
But once again, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. And they let you change the model. Maybe there's different models, different colors, obviously. It's it's another thing we kind of have to wait until the game comes out and how much freedom as a player we have. Going back to character creation and voices. There's only two voices in the game, male and female. Like, yeah, you can change the pitch, but from the showcase, the different pitches don't sound very different. Sound very similar. You're basically stuck with two voices, male or female. And I kind of wish they had more. I mean, it's understandable. The main character is talking a lot throughout the game, right? Every time you receive a quest, you talk with the NPC. But it goes back to not having a big budget. Probably didn't have a big budget, and so they could only ha have two main actors. But yeah, the character creation is not very deep. It's not the best I've seen. It has a decent amount of options that I think will satisfy everyone. I think the graphics for the main character look really good. The NPCs don't look as good as the main character, but they look decent. But I, I would have liked a little more freedom with the character creation. So those are some of the concerns I have, some of the big concerns I have. I think overall it's going to be a good game. Hopefully a lot of these things are fixed, right? This is a work in progress, so hopefully it's better now than what we saw in the showcase. Combat looks very simple. Doesn't look very complex at all. You know, I wonder if there's like a reputation system in the game or some kind of a faction system. That way you can have different runs. Like you can have a good run, an evil run. You can side with one group of people instead of another. You know, besides the showcases, I haven't really seen anything about this game. I just don't want any spoilers. And I just want to enjoy the game by myself. So let me know in the comments. What, what are you thinking about this game? Are you thinking about getting it? Did you see any glitches in the showcases or any frame drops? Let me know in the comments. I feel like this game's gonna have a lot of easter eggs a lot of little details here and there seems like that's gonna be a big thing in this game is exploration and just learning about the area learning about hogwarts so i'm excited for this game i do have these concerns but like i said before hopefully i'm wrong and the game's a lot better now and we also have to trust avalon right they're the ones making the game we have to trust that they'll do a good job i've looked at the previous games they worked on and they haven't really worked on any big games like this Hopefully they'll pull through and make an amazing game.